Hey folks, welcome back to GP Reactions. I hope you're well. Um, big thank you to everyone that has um, subscribed over the last few weeks. I haven't been about. Um, I will do a, post a separate video for that. Uh, yeah, so I'm just really made up to be back and reacting. And um, I'm sort of quite nervous about this next trap because, you know, I've just... It feels like I'm reacting for the first time all over again because it feels like it's been ages since I have reacted. And um, yeah, I always like to give Genesis my best attention, if you know what I mean. I don't know, I don't know what I'm going into, but I know that it's probably going to be really top quality. So yeah, this is Genesis. Um, this is, I think, the third track I've reacted to from this album. I've reacted to um, One for the Vine and um, Blood on the Rooftops and this is the 11th Earl of Mar and this is taken from the album Wind and Weathering written by um, Tony Banks, Steve Hackett and Mick Rutherford and the album was released in the December of 1976. Uh, indeed this is the opening track to the album and um, I'm not sure if this album has any themes in it. I'm I'm always a little bit worried that when I jump from one track to the other that um, there's some kind of theme going on. But um, this is definitely the first track, so I can't go too far wrong with this. Obviously, um, apart from Banks, Hackett and Rufford, we have Phil Collins um, on this. So uh, we're down to the four members now. I think... Was this the first album that they released since Peter Gabriel left? Maybe. Uh, I think it was, you know, I think this is the first album that they released since Peter Gabriel left. And obviously they've, you know, when you, um, when you change your lead vocalist, um, you know, for pivotal, you know, point of, of most bands is the lead vocalist and it it's it's a risk it's a gamble but i think um knowing what i know about genesis now from from recent years and from a few reactions i've done you know it's a gamble that really really worked so uh, but this is going to be interesting because this is the first track and they must have been um curious how this album would be received post peter gabriel so um yeah, I'm really interested. It's a long track. It's 7 minutes 44, so um, okay, let's click play and see what this is about. So I'm going to take it back to the start, but I really, really love this opening. Um, it feels mystical, magical, but it feels like something big is, is brewing. It feels like something grand is on the horizon. And um, well, it's a fantastic opening. Let me just take that back. Listen to that again.
Well, I'm just going to take the opportunity just to pause it there. That was breathless, but it's 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 crazy how they managed to capture a uh, a feeling um, of the lyrics throughout the through the music and through uh, Phil's vocals and his delivery. It's, I mean, obviously there there's a big day and that day kind of feels like you can feel the the weight of the pressure of organisation of that day in the very the very opening sequence because it's kind of building you know something big is, is supposed to happen today so there's some people are returning they're obviously heroes of some kind there's going to be a big fanfare everybody's busy um and i think uh, i i'm kind of getting a, yeah this is definitely from a child's perspective so everything's not only is it busy but everything's big um because people are big and it's so small but it's exciting what's going on it doesn't really know uh, it's just great. It really kind of, and it feels, it feels kind of exciting and warm. Uh, and that is the one theme about this, this, the album tracks I've heard so far, um, regardless of the nature of, um, the storyline, the lyrics, um, the theme, um, there's a warmth to these, to the music that kind of draws you in. It, it, it you know, it's like, it's going to be okay. Kind of, you know, it's, it, it, you know, it just has a glow about it, and this, this is this is fantastic. But it's full on. I absolutely love it. I love also that um, when when Phil's singing, he I don't know what the term for it is, but it's kind of underscoring his voice with it's almost like a talking bit, and uh, that's really really good because that kind of gives gives. It, I don't know. It just adds a little dimension, a bit of depth to. Um, to, to the um, the vocals um, to to the story if you like um, brilliant it's, I love it so far I think we're going into a bit of a quiet buildy bit here that's what I like to kind of refer I've kind of gotten used to like these Genesis quiet bits when it build but um, it's I I will say about the the Genesis um, instrumental breaks that they have and that. It's like the best magic tricks ever. You can never, you can never really predict how it's gonna go. It's it kind of when when you just when you think it's building to something, it changes to something else. Um, classic examples for for fifth. That was you know unbelievable. But yeah, you know third track on his album so far, fantastic. Absolutely loving it. Just noticed that the cascading um, piano as well. That is, I mean, that's just incredible. Tony Banks really, he's really, he's all over this album. He's fantastic. I've got to take that back a bit. I've only just noticed that piano, and that's amazing. <laughs> Really stripped back now. To go to bed, never seems to keep to be a guest now in a house of dreams. Screams 
was oh, that was masterful that was a masterful masterpiece um oh, every every time i listen to genesis i say that's a masterpiece but oh my god you know the, the way they transport you into another world um i don't know that i don't know many songs that can do that you know, it's just, I mean, literally, I was in a different world for for seven minutes then. That was incredible. And Phil's voice on this as well, when he when he does the quiet bits, oh, it's so it's so smooth and it's also almost like hypnotic. He's, he had that, you know, pitch to his voice, a tone. Everything was really high, hypnotic. Uh, it's like a lullaby type voice. Um, my God, that was that was a hell of a song. I'm not entirely sure what the story was about. I'm guessing something went wrong at the end. The music sort of changed. It became, it was still grand, but it became a little bit more dark. And then I think there was like a dream dream sequence, a little bit in, in the middle. So um, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna dive into the lyrics and see if I can make head or tail of this. Eleven furlong miles, so um, the sun had been up for a couple of hours, covered the ground with a layer of gold. It's pure poetry, isn't it? Um, the spirits were high and the raining had, had stopped. The larder was low, but the boy wasn't at all. So he's really looking forward to that day. And maybe these heroes are going to bring back some food. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe they're bringing riches and that they can trade. Um, so that the, the village or the town or the city can have, you know, a better way of life. Couldn't get them very, 11 further, Ma, couldn't get them very far. Daddy, oh daddy, you promised. So, sounds like a bit of a um, disappointment there. Out on the road in a direction of Perth. I mean, Perth, that's, um, there is a Perth in Scotland. There's also a Perth in Australia. Backwards and forwards in a circle they went. Found a city half open and ready to greet the conquering heroes with blisters on their feet. Eleven Earl of Mar somehow got them all this far. Daddy, you promised, you promised. See the steward all dressed up, and I think this was like a change in um, tempo here, and it's like changing uh, in the way the lyrics were brought out. Um, 
Stephen Stewart all dressed up, he's got eyes in the back of his head. Who came in a cockle shell boat that could only just float, couldn't even lift a sword, dressed too fine and smelling of wine. Daddy, you've got to go. Here comes the bishop all dressed up. He's going to bless you if you're ready to pay. One wave of his funny old stick. There's a band of light across your eyes. Um, they waited a week. They still hadn't appeared. That glorious timing that everyone feared. So they've been waiting a week for these people to turn up. And I think each time um, people, it's an excuse to have it like a bit of a party and a drink. And uh, it's bringing everybody out. Um, it sounds like it brings it the worst out of some people. So they're riding along on a crest of a wave. They're headed for London and that will be their grave. Oh, okay. So I missed those lyrics in the song. So does that mean that this is an army of some kind? Um, and if we're talking about Perth, we're talking Perth, Scotland. So is this something to do with... Um, I, don't, I can't... William, um, was it... I can't think of a name of the, the, um, the person, um, but it was like Braveheart or something like that. Waited a week, they still hadn't appeared, that glorious time in it, everyone feared, so they're riding along on the crystal wave, head for London, that would be their grave. So it's definitely, um, you know, that's, in retrospect, that's where they all got killed. Well, he couldn't get down, the 11 further Mar, well, he couldn't get them down that far. Daddy, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, time to go to bed now. Never seems too keen to be a guest now in our house of dreams, sir. This is the sleeping bit for the child, sir. Flying from a hillside, beckoning the trees, a sailboat's awning, mimicking a breeze. I'm fighting gravity, falling, my daddy won't let them get me. A voice screams, seems to be calling, the face turns, features are burning. Daddy, you've got to go see the 15 going by. Tell the lads and lords we're running backwards today. And once again, you stand alone. You know, it's really cool lyrics. I didn't realise there must be some sort of historical context to this. Um, bury your memories, bury your friends. Leave it alone for a year or two. Till the stories go hazy and the legends come true. Then do it again. Some things never end. 11 further mile won't be going very far. Um, unbelievably fantastic song, really interesting lyrics now I've got into them and I'll have a re-listen to that and, you know, just see how everything fits together. But it, the, the themes and the way they presented it, it did kind of feel like they're waiting for returning heroes that would never return. Um, but yeah, it's amazing, the keyboards, um, Steve Hackett's guitar at the beginning. I, I think, I mean, I'm just guessing that was Steve Hackett. Um, let me just take that back. It's hard to tell whether that's keyboards or guitar. I think the next bit is definitely guitar. There's definitely Steve Hackett, it has to be. I've heard other Steve Hackett tracks and... You know, that was fantastic. I'm sure Steve Hackett's guitar is a doorway to another dimension um, because it's always um, that, that extra influence of his that just, it takes you from the mystical into, into a completely different realm. And um, yeah, it's, what a, I, I mean, this is, so far this has been a, it's the best I've heard from Genesis. Um, no, that's not fair because I, I really enjoyed um, Further Fifth, that was, that was a masterpiece, but um, I don't know, they're just an incredible band. It, yeah, I, I can't listen to their new stuff anymore. I, you know, I, I've heard it on the radio. Um, I heard um, No Son of Mine the other day. It, yeah, it's a powerful piece, but it it doesn't, and, and I guess it's moving, you know, and it would probably 
illicit feelings in, in certain people, but you know, when when I compare those like music to this music, it's uh, this is just you know, out of this world. It's otherworldly. Um, that said, I mean, I am planning to listen to, I think it's called Driving in the Last Bike, so, um, which was off air. To, to, for me, that was off air last album with Phil Collins, so, yeah, I'll, I might give that a listen. Anyway, folks, um, please join me in the comments below. Um, it's great to be back, like I've said. I'm really looking forward to your comments on this track and which track I should listen to next on wind and wuthering perhaps so um, yeah till next time take care of yourselves and um, have a fantastic weekend and a superb week i think we've got some sunshine coming yay um so i'm really looking forward to that the garden needs some attention so um today's overcast which is fantastic it means i'm not feeling guilty for not doing any gardening but i'm feeling very good about doing some reactions so yeah till next time take care have a good one